This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, hello there. I'm Jeff Diamond. Welcoming you to another sports catastrophe on this day. Um, it was a tight one for thinking which one I was going to go for. I could have went with Super Bowl one because it was held. The first ever Super Bowl was on the state January 15, 1967. However, I found another one that was interesting. And I figured that, you know, just take a look at it. In fact, I had never done this before. Like, the rules for on this day, not like birthday boy, is that I can't have the same sport two straight days. So sadly, because yesterday I did the Giants-Minnesota thing from 2001, I decided to go with hockey. And that's the guy. This is Bill Masterton. He's the face of a trophy. Well, the namesake of a trophy, if you will. Bill Masterton was born in 1938 in Winnipeg and died January 15, 1968 in Minneapolis. The incident did happen on January 13th, just to let you know. However, he died on this day, so that's why this is his thing. And basically talk about hockey deaths and all that. So anyway, he's the only player in NHL history that has directed results of injuries suffered during a game because he had hand injuries against the Oakland Seals. He was a standout with the Denver Pioneers in the NCAA and was twice a champion. He played in the Montreal organization before Minnesota picked him up in the expansion draft and offered him a place to play on the newly found North Stars. And he scored the first goal in franchise history. So basically, Masterson's death led to wearing helmets. Few NHL players did that. Some did, like J.C. Trombley. But anyway, several, despite several ma efforts to mandate their use, the NHL finally made it compulsory in 1979 to wear helmets and all that when he entered in the league. However, if you were an NHLer who played before 1979 in the NHL, you were grandfathered. That meant you didn't have to wear a helmet. All that. And Craig McTavish was the last guy to not wear a helmet. It was 1987. In his memory, the NHL created the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy. We'll talk about that later. Which has been awarded since 1968 to a player who has perseverance and dedication to hockey. The North Stars have retired as number 19. Well, a.k.a. the Dallas Stars. And still is retired to this day. So Bill Masterton was a decent person for the University of Denver. He did very well for themselves. He had an engineering degree. He wanted to play pro hockey and signed with the Montreal Canadiens. Sadly, though, Masterton had one problem. He was a center, and the Habs were deep at center. Belleville and Henri Pocket Market Richard were helping out at, in center. So basically, he was stuck in the Eastern Professional League and all that. He was promoted to the AHL's Cleveland Barons. All that. Unfortunately, Masterton knew that he couldn't make the Montreal roster, so he basically left the game to get his master's degree at the University of Denver. He took a job in contracts administration in Minneapolis and even joined the Honeywell Corporation, which he, where he worked on the Apollo program, space program. That's pretty neat. And he and his wife adopted two children. He wanted to play senior hockey in the United States Hockey League. All that. He would do pretty well for himself. And he became an American citizen in 66-67 to join the U.S. national team. So the NHL expanded in 1967, and guess what? Minnesota had the team. The coach and GM, Ren Blair, scouted Masterton when he played for the U.S. national team and purchased his NHL rights from the Habs. Masterton was the first North Star to be signed. He signed a two-year contract. He didn't think he would consider playing for any other team other than the North Stars. So he made his debut in the North Stars inaugural game October 11, 1967 against the Blues, and he scored the first goal ever. Masterton had only gotten 12 points in 38 games, but he still was there. Unfortunately, things looked terrible. In the, in the first period of Minnesota's home game against the Oakland Seals, Masterton had a brain injury. He was carrying the puck up ice and passed it off, but two Seals defenders, Larry Cahan and Ron Nor Harris, converged and knocked him backwards, and he landed on his head. He was not wearing a helmet, and they said the hit looked like an explosion. The force of the impact made Bastardin bleed from his nose, ears, and mouth. And of course, he lost consciousness before he hit the ice. 
He was rushed to hospital. And all that. He was attended to by neurosurgeons. Unfortunately, the injury was too severe for surgery to be a viable option. He never regained consciousness, and 30 hours after he got hurt, he died. Minnesota basically fumbled. Larry Cahan passed away years ago, but Ron Harris was the only one of the two to make an interview. And he, inter he had an interview in 2003, St. Paul Press, said that he was haunted for many years in his, in his role in Masterson's death. It bothers you the rest of your life. It wasn't dirty. It wasn't meant to happen that way. Still, it's very hard because I made the play. It's always in the back of my mind. However, Masterson family held no grudges against Harris or Cahan for his thing. It was just a fluke. And then, you know, a lot of people thought that helmets were supposed to be good and all that. The NHL tried to make a rule in 1971, but the players rejected it. Some players did wear helmets during Masterson's death, but adoption was slow. Three years later, only six North Stars players wore them, and that was the most in the, by a team in the NHL right now. The macho attitude was a reason for long lessons. But the NHL finally decided that enough was enough, and by 70 and 80, when they expanded with the WHA teams, they decided to say that you're going to wear a helmet, like it or not. There were rumors circulating that, you know, Masterton's aggressive firing style, alongside the macho attitude, was actually significant. Masterton may have had a pre-existing brain hemorrhage, and he was having troubles. They wanted Master to be checked out by the doctor, but Master didn't brush it off. And John Muckler, who just recently passed away, said that maybe Master Tin may have suffered a brain injury in training camp. And Master Tin would block out during rushes in, in practice. And that he would have a lot of migraines and all that. He actually, there was a neurosurgeon who said that his autopsy and said that Master Tin suffered second impact syndrome. When players, when a person suffers a second concussion on top of an earlier untreated concussion, when this happens, it could lead to brain swelling. So, of course, as we said, the Bill Masterson Trophy was created, and then the North Stars decided to pull his number 19 out of circulation. And, it ought, and Dallas still honors it to this day. All that. Sad how things happen. But the Bill Masterton award is legendary. It's often awarded to a player who's come back from career or even life-threatening illness or injury. The problem is that Western Conference teams have only won, players from Eastern Western Conference teams have only won 18 times since the 1960s because of the press in the East. So here's some Bill Masterton winners. Um, Sean Rattel won in 1971. Well, the first ever one was Claude Provo of the Habs. 71, Sean Rattel won it for the Rangers, 20 year veteran because of his lifelong dedication to clean hockey. Bobby Clark won in 72 for his overcoming diabetes to play in the NHL, which was amazing. Diabetes is no joke. They gave Henri Richard the 1974 Masterton for his 20 year career. Uh, Roger Bear in 1976 got it because he once had a massive back injury playing junior hockey in Guelph and slipped on an ice cream container late or something, and his back pains were brutal, but he still managed to play the game. Butch Goring won in 1978 for his small stature and all that and consistently having good seasons. They gave Serge Chavard the 1979 and 79 for his dedication to hockey. Um... The funny thing in 1982 is that Chico Brash, when he played for the Colorado Rockies, soon to be the New Jersey De Devils, actually was there because, you know, they were a young team and basically, you know, it's as he gave his young team more confidence when he was the goalie. Of course, that was the, the same franchise that Don Cherry coached for one season, but couldn't handle Hardy Astrum's sloppiness. Brad Park was given the 84 one for his dedication, despite the fact that he 
play for a team that qualified for 17 straight years without winning the Stanley Cup. Anders Hedberg was given it in 85 for a dedicated career and had a good season, too. Doug Jarvis was given the 87 Masterton for his breaking Gary Unger's consecutive game streak. Tim Kerr won the 89 one for his coming back from severe knee and shoulder injuries as well as aseptic meningitis the season before. Wow, didn't know that. Lord Kulusak won in 1990 for his for the fact that he had too many knee operations. He tried to overcome 10 knee operations, like kind of like Bobby Orr, but he basically had to retire. And Kluzak was a big guy coming out of junior. Dave Taylor won it for his dedication with the Kings. Mark Fitzpatrick had Malagia syndrome, a life-threatening disease, and returned to the NHL for the Islanders. Mario Lemieux, because of his comeback from Hodgkin's lymphoma in 93, Cam Neely in 94, because he was trying to return to the NHL despite having major injuries, including Alf Samuelson's 30 hits in 1991. Pat LaFontaine won in 95 for coming, overcoming head injuries. Gary Roberts won in 96 for his coming back from possibly career-ending surgery to correct bone spurs and nerve damage. Tony Granato overcame a career-ending, a possible career-ending brain injury in the 96 season to score 25 goals during the 97 season, which meant he won the Masterton. Jamie McClennan overcame bacterial meningitis to win 98. 99, John Hopkins, John Cullen of the Lightning overcame Ron Hodgkin's lymphoma, just like Lemieux. Um, Saku Koivu won the 2002 Masterton for his overcoming Ron Hodgkin's lymphoma. Brian Burrard won in 2004 with the Hawks because he overcame an injury that had him legally blind in one eye. That accidental stick from Holsa into the eye in 2000. Phil Kessel won it in 2007 because he had testicular cancer mid-season. Wow, I didn't know that. Jason Blake in 2008 won it with the Leafs. Despite his diagnosis of chronic melogenous leukemia, he played all 82 games. Um, Ian LaPerrier in 2011 won it because he had post-concussion syndrome after being hit in the face with a puck in the 2010 Stanley Cup playoffs, but served the team in several capacities. Max Pacioretty won in 2012 because of him having that brutal hit by Chara done to him and basically a concussion fractured vertebrae. And he scored 33 goals that season. Josh Harding in 2013 won it because he was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis in the off season but he started five playoff games for them. Dominic Moore in 2014 because he had a care, uh, he cared for his wife Katie following her rare form of liver cancer, though. David Dubnik, uh, oh, they didn't really say Dubnik. Dover Yager won the 2016 Master Gym for his press appearance and all that. Craig Anderson in 2017 got it because. Well, he helped his team made the conference final after leaving midseason to be with his wife, Nicole, who was dying of cancer. Brian Boyle won the 2018 award for being diagnosed with myeloid leukemia. And he made it through kind of cancer. Robin Leonard, having bipolar disorder in the offseason, he decided to come clean and he basically helped the others do pretty well. And then the last Masterton winner was Bobby Ryan, who had struggles with alcoholism, post-traumatic stress disorder, mostly because of his family being threatened by people. You know, he got the award for that. So great times by all. Anyway, thanks for watching. I do.